Welcome to the System Simplified Podcast, where we feature top leaders who share stories on how to successfully systemize a business. Now, let's get started with the show. Hello, Adik Levitt here with the System Simplified Podcast, where we interview top entrepreneurs, founders, and thought leaders about systematizing a business. And this podcast is being brought to you by Business Success Consulting Group. At Business Success Consulting Group, we create custom processes and tailor-made business systems so businesses can thrive and grow. Okay, and today's guest is Chris Ronzio. Hi, Chris. Hi, thanks for having me. You are very welcome. I'm so happy you're on the podcast. I am so thrilled to talk to you today because, well, first of all, Chris is the CEO and founder of Trenual which is a software as a service platform to document processes and procedures and help businesses really get to the next level and let allow business owners to actually delegate correctly, et cetera. And not only that, Chris is also an author and he wrote the business playbook. You want to show, show your book to the camera? So we have it, the business <laughs> right playbook, here. which is an excellent book and highly recommended. And Chris, not only you are doing all those things, you also basically you also walk the walk, right? Because you win when Trenial has been voted as the number one place to work or one of the best places to work in. Is it Arizona? Yeah, we won uh, Arizona number one best place to work, and then also Inc. Magazine featured us nationally in the U.S. So that was, uh, was an honor, an honor. Absolutely. And then you also won the Phoenix Business Journal, the 40 under 40 award, <laughs> right? And it goes on and on and on. I mean, the list of awards uh, are just incredible, but that just shows that you're actually living what you're preaching, right? So you actually have a great culture, a great place to work, and you are helping entrepreneurs all over the world in 170 countries to actually document their processes and procedures, create a knowledge transfer and a knowledge base so they can grow and scale. And that's what we're going to talk about today, about best practices on scaling the business and documenting. Okay. But before that, let's talk about tra how Trainual got started. Sure. So the idea for Trainual came as sort of an evolution of my own entrepreneurial experience. So I started my first company when I was 14 years old. It was a video production company that did youth sporting events all around the United States. So it started just at my high school, and then it moved on to events around the state of Massachusetts, where I grew up, and then New England, and then across the US. And as it was growing, the business would operate by finding camera crews in all different cities that we had events in. And we had to train those crews on our way of doing what we did so that when they showed up to an event, they looked and felt like they were part of my company, of my brand. And so from a really young age, I was focused on consistency and operational effectiveness and workflows and checklists and processes. And that was just part of my DNA. And so after I grew that company, I sold that business after 13 years and started a small consulting company where I was like you, helping people organize their processes and build better businesses. And so as I was doing that over and over, I thought, I wish there was a, a tool designed for small companies to house all of this information and not just you know a, a digital three ring binder of, of text, but a tool that could incorporate videos and interactive elements and a tool that you could take with you on the go and look up uh, when you were in the field or if you have multiple offices. And so that was where the idea for Trainual came from. It was just a modern training manual and we called it Trainual. So at first it was just a, a small product, a prototype for my consulting business. And we launched that in 2015. And then three years later, after using it with all my consulting clients and those customers referring it to their friends, we thought, let's make a, a business out of this. And so Trainual became a business in 2018. Wow. And now, so how many employees did you have at the beginning? Uh, at the very beginning, when it was a prototype, it was just me. Uh, when we launched it as a business in 2018, we had five people. And today we have 81. Amazing. 
That is absolutely amazing. So what's the key to your success from getting to five to 81 employees in <laughs> three years during a pandemic? Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd say the, the, the real key to success is build a product that people use, that people need. You know, we, uh, I didn't try to launch the software business until I had a proof of concept that customers were using. And the first couple of customers that used Trainual didn't even pay me for it. It was just a free add-on as part of my consulting services. And so it took a few years to get all that feedback and to get people using the product. But when they were referring it to their friends and and starting to pay for it, I thought, okay, now we can build a business around this. And my my thinking was, you know, if I if I can get 25 or 50 of my clients to use this, can I get 10 strangers to use this? And so I went out and I thought, and I we put some ads together and we got 10, 20, 30 different companies that we didn't even know who they were. They were just strangers from the internet. And then I thought, okay, if if 10 strangers from the internet will buy this, then why not a thousand? Why not 10,000? And, and that was really when the business started to take off was once we could sell the product, the strangers without that word of mouth, person to person relationship. Absolutely. And you know, and you have something that I see in common with a lot of entrepreneurs, because I interview many of them. I'm one myself, but it's really the think you're thinking big. You know, you said, okay, so if I can sell it to 10, I can also sell it to 100. I can sell it to 1,000. I can sell it to 10,000. And that vision and that thinking big is really something that I see as a common denominator, wouldn't you say? Absolutely. In, in my consulting business, actually, I had a mentor challenge me to set a, a BHAG, you know, from Jim Collins' book, Good, Good to Great. So I set this big, hairy, audacious goal that my consulting business would work with 25,000 companies. And at the time, I had maybe 15 maybe 15 clients that I had worked with. And so 25,000 was this massive number that you can't even imagine how you would possibly get to that number. And so in my consulting business, I thought, well, I could get to 25,000 if I had consultants in all different cities. And if each of those consultants had 50 clients and if those 50 clients would refer so many a year. And so I, I pieced it together and thought, okay, that's how I can get to 25,000. And funny enough, on the way to building that that vision that I had, I started hiring other consultants and I was training them with Trainual, my own product. And I had this kind of light bulb go off and I thought, well, maybe Trainual is the thing that gets us to 25,000 companies. And, and so we shifted the business and literally the entire business, but kept the same mission, kept that, that uh, you know, that big vision to go after that, that uh, a large market. Absolutely. That's great. So now let's talk about your book, The Business Playbook. So what, how did, why did you even think about writing a book? What made you write it? So I had been starting to write this book for three years. And every time I take out my laptop and started writing, I thought, oh, I don't know if I'm ready to write it yet. And if you know from, from you know, how I talk about process, uh, you, know, you, you want to actually make sure that you've tested a process, that it's consistent before you take the time to write it down and document it. You know, you, I, I've got this phrase in the book and before the book where uh, do it, document it, delegate it. And the idea is that in a business, you learn to do something, you experiment, and until you figure out the consistent way of doing it, then you don't document it. And so I realized with my book that I was still kind of in that do it phase. I was still learning and experimenting with philosophies. And so at the very beginning of Trainual, I thought, let me write a book on why people need a training manual, an operations manual, a playbook. And then I realized, well, we've only got a few hundred companies. I should probably just keep listening. I should probably understand what people are using and creating before I write the best practice. And so I waited until we had thousands and thousands of companies all over the world and, and then picked up the project again and thought, all right, now's the time to write it. Now, now I can share a best practice. Great. So what are some of the best practices? I mean, I know you bo in your book, you're talking about the four different groups. So, so let's start with that. So one, tell us more about that. 
Yeah. So I say that in a playbook, you've got four P's. You've got the profile of your company. Think of your profile as just the general information, your story, your history, your culture, your values, your vision, your mission, all of the stuff that makes you different from a competitor. That's your company profile. So you want to document that. And it's probably the first thing that you're going to work on because it's something that applies to everyone across the business. Every single person you hire needs to be aligned on who you are, your profile as a business. So that's the first P. The next P is your people. Every company, even if they're in the same market, serving the same kind of customer with the same product, you have a different set of people with different experiences, different roles, different responsibilities, different departments. And so your people section of your playbook is really mapping out who's who in the business and who does what around here so that your new hires can get clear on who do I go to for which questions. So that's the second P. The third P is your policies. So every business has some rules, uh, written or unwritten. There is a way that you operate in the company. There are things that are okay to do, things that are not okay to do. And so the more specific you can be as a business owner, as a leader to spell out those expectations, uh, the more successful your people will be. And so that third P is your policies. It's kind of like your employee handbook. And then the fourth P is your processes. Those are the how-tos. Those are the standard operating procedures, the way you do what you do, the how. And so when you put those four things together, your profile, your people, your policies, your processes, that's what makes up all of the DNA of your company's playbook. And the playbook really is a tangible thing that you could hand to anyone to show them how your business works. Absolutely. That's great. So now let's talk about the processes. So as if somebody is listening to us right now and they want to start documenting their processes and procedures, where would you recommend that they start? So with your processes, you want to start where you have the most opportunity first. And so in my video company, I'll use that as an example. One of the processes that we did the most frequently was packaging up a video, a DVD, a Blu-ray disc, something like that, and sending it around the world. And so we did this thousands of times a week from all these productions we had, we had thousands and thousands of videos that were being shipped out. And so you could imagine that the repetition of that process creates a lot of opportunity for inconsistency. So if we had hired five different people to do that and they messed up the postage or they messed up the the disc in the wrong case, that would be havoc for our customer support and customer success department. And so we started with that process because it was done most frequently in the business. And so for anyone that's just jumping into process, I would say, think about what is done most frequently in your business. What is the most important for you to do consistently? And that's one place to start. There's a couple other places to start. Like if there's something that uh, a, a responsibility that a lot of different people share. So for instance, in a retail store, checking people out, at a cash register or uh, processing gift cards. This is something that a lot of different people have to do. So that's a process that uh, could be prone to issues. You should write that one down. And there's also processes that are being handed from one person to another, being delegated. Say you're hiring a new role and you're putting a set of responsibilities together for that new person, you should work on those processes because you have an urgent need to delegate that. So there's a couple of different ways to come at it, but I, I recommend that people focus on the processes that have that opportunity so that they uh, don't feel like they're just writing things down for the sake of it and there's no use. Absolutely. And I agree with you 100%. That's what I my approach is as well is to basically ask the question, if you look at all the processes and procedures in your company, which area, if you had well-documented processes and procedures would give you the biggest return on investment, whatever that return investment is, not necessarily just monetary, but it might be that, you know, you have a key employee that is leaving and all the knowledge is going to walk away. Or like, you know, as you said, like in terms of risk mitigation and customer service, so prone to mistakes, et cetera. So I totally agree with you. That's, but I like the word opportunity. So it's like where you find the most opportunity. Right. So then, okay, we found that area. And um, what do we do next? So how do you write it down or how do you mm -hmm. record it? Yeah. So one important call out here is that when you're documenting processes, I don't think the processes have to be written. They just have to be captured in some way. And so some people are best 
uh, you know, can best document by video like we're doing right now, just some simple questions. Some people are really good writers. Some people focus on audio. Some people might make amazing presentations or slides. And so how you document can be any of those formats as long as you just start to do it. That's the important part. So every process that you want to document has a formula. The fo whole formula is in the book, uh, but the basics are that you want uh, every process to have a simple process name. You want to answer basic questions like who's the owner of this process? Who's responsible for keeping it updated? Who do I go to with questions? You want to record when this was last updated so people know uh, when uh, processes get stale or out of date. You want to record, is there anything I need, any tools I need in order to get this process done? It could be uh, a letter company letterhead or a, a template, a document template that you use. It could be uh, logins to a, a, an application. It could be physical tools that you need to get the job done, but a process could have tools that needs to get done. Uh, every process has some sort of frequency to it. Is this done every day? Is this done every week? Is this done Mondays at 9 a.m.? Uh, so, so the frequency that it should be done. Every process uh, has an amount of time that is appropriate. So does this take 30 minutes if it's done right? Does this take three, min three months if it's done right? Um, so a lot of what I'm getting at here is the context around a process. Because a process isn't just step one, do this, step two, do this, step three, do this. You've got to inform the person that you're, you're training with all of that context so that they know when they do this and they know why they do this. And then you get to the how, and the how is just the, the sequence of steps. Absolutely. I agree. So then we, let's, let's say we documented it. Then what's the next step after that? Keep documenting other things. I mean, <laughs> it depends. It depends on the company. So, you know, for some people, you may document something and then you may test it out. You may as assign it to a new person. And, right. and you know, what you're testing for is do they understand it? Did I miss anything? Because a lot of times when we document something that we do, that we know, you can skip steps in your head that you take for granted. And when you give it to someone else, they may totally misunderstand because they missed some crucial steps. And so you want to go through this process of sharing it with somebody, having them test the process, making sure that it makes sense so that you can iterate and you can fill in the gaps. Excellent. Excellent advice. Absolutely. You have to pilot it. You have to make sure, you know, because as you said, you're writing it to a set according to some set of circumstances that you have in mind, but you might not have thought about different things or something happened, et cetera. And then it's good for somebody to go through it, especially if it is somebody new, so they can go through it and then they can give you the feedback as well. So if you're just hiring a new employee for that position, it's great opportunity to actually take a look at it. So yeah. let's say we have it all documented. And that's what I hear very often from my clients is like, how do we ensure that the, the, the procedures are actually being followed by all, right? It's actually being utilized and are not just sitting there um, accumulating electronic dust, right? Instead of just dust on the shelf. Now it's, yes, it is in the cloud, but the, um, the final test is if they're being used. So what's, what are some of the advice that you can give business owners on how to actually get those processes implemented? Yeah, so one thing is first, you wanna, you wanna track that people have seen them. And so, you know, you can create the most beautiful document and post it somewhere online and send the link out to everyone. And if you have no mechanism for following through and holding that person accountable to know that they've actually seen it, um, that's half the battle. And so when you're writing this process, you want to divide them into who needs to know what in the business. And it may be department specific, it may be role specific, and then you should track that people have actually seen these things. You know, the processes are there to be useful for the people. And if you're creating processes that no one's ever looking at, either they're outdated or they weren't that useful. And maybe you didn't need to write them down in the first place. So that would be my first argument would be to create useful content that people need to reference, that people uh, actually learn from. And then the next piece would be to hold uh, people accountable or, or, or give them ownership, empower them to own different processes. Because as a, a business leader, a business owner, it's not up to you to 
own every process and make sure that everybody follows every process. Processes are meant to be evolved. Processes and best practices should change because businesses should change and evolve. And so really what you're trying to do is start to subdivide ownership and say for this area of the business, this person is the owner of all of these processes and it's their responsibility to keep things up to date. And as the business grows, they subdivide it even further and they give ownership to people on their team. And so building processes really is a, uh, initially it can be a top-down exercise when there's only one person or only a few people that do everything, but eventually processes become this bottoms up exercise where everyone in the business has ownership over a certain area of the business and they're creating best practices is what helps them become more efficient. And it's what helps them delegate to other people and what helps them grow a team so that they can progress in their own career. Absolutely. So, you know, you, you mentioned a really, really good points, but I think the last one in terms of like, basically what you're saying is there have the buying will happen if you actually see the results. So if you're writing the right processes and the right procedures that you can actually utilize in order to delegate and you get your, um, you get the final product of actually delegation or freedom or whatever that, that is, there is the reward. So you want to do more of that, right? So um, I think that that will definitely encourage people to then utilize the procedures that are being written because you see the rewards and you see that it works and you're accomplishing what you want to accomplish. Absolutely. Nothing reinforces doing all that hard work, like the, the end result of having some freedom of time. Absolutely. That's right. All right. So we discussed the different, the four different things that have to be in a playbook. And then basically the process on how to write processes and procedures and get them followed by all. So now let's talk a little bit about challenges, because I think that if we actually recognize the challenge, the challenges of starting a project or taking it all the way to a complete, to a completion, then we can understand when we understand those challenges, we can also overcome them better because you can go, oh yeah, yeah, you know, I heard, you know, I heard Adi and Chris talk about those challenges, and yes, this is what's happening right now. So I'm not the only one. Maybe I should just push through this, right? Yeah. So yeah. what are the most common challenges that you see, or that you heard, that you encounter from business owners? Why they don't get started on documenting their processes and procedures? A lot of times they don't get started because there's a more urgent burning fire in the business. And, you know, the, the problems in your business uh, often are symptoms of not having the foundations of great systems and processes. And so when small businesses are stuck putting out those fires, they can develop this mindset of saying, oh, it's just easier if I do it. I'd rather just do it than write the instructions and show someone else how to do it. But then you end up in this, in this wheel, this never ending wheel of doing it and doing it, and you can never get out of it. And so the first thing to recognize is that uh, making an investment in delegating, in documenting some of your processes takes time. It absolutely does, but it's to free up time long-term. It's this catch 22. And so I think that's the first place where people get stuck is they want the end result, but they don't want to put in the work. It's almost like they want to be in great shape, but don't want to work out, you know, or, or don't want to eat right. And, and so the, the documentation is the equivalent of working out and eating right for a business. You know, so it's kind of like, it's not for it depends really on how much you want it, right? How much do you want? Like, say, let's say you want to be in shape, so you're going to eat right and you're going to exercise, right? If you don't want to be in shape or you don't really have the willpower to actually get there, so you're not just not going to do it. And I think the same thing with businesses. If businesses really want to grow and scale, they have to have those processes and procedures in place because otherwise you can't really delegate. So yeah, that leads exactly. me to my next question is, why do you think... Um, business owners actually want to delegate that because, you know, that's really their baby. They started a business, you know, it's mine. You know, I have the proud um, feeling of accomplishment or ownership. Like why, why do you find that people want to delegate? Why they don't want to, or why they, no, why they do, why, they, why do they have that dream of like, yeah, I want to just do it. I just want to delegate what I'm doing to others. So then, you know, what, 
You know what I mean? Because yeah. you know, you look, you go, you started a business. Why? Well, I think a lot of people start a business because they're really good at doing the thing the business does. And so if an entrepreneur starts the company as the one delivering the product or delivering the service, over time, they realize that they are captive to the business because the only way that the business makes money is by them putting in those hours and delivering the product or delivering the service. And so you realize at some point that if you're passionate about getting this product or service to as many people as possible, because you think it has such great value, then you can't be the bottleneck. You can't limit the capacity of your company to put out this thing based on the hours you have in a day. And so I think for most entrepreneurs, they go through this cycle where at the beginning, they're in this experimentation mode of trying to perfect the product or service. But once they do and they perfect it to a point that they're delivering it consistently the same way every time, then a switch flips and you realize that you just have this job and that all you're doing is the same thing over and over. Well, that's the reason to document and delegate that process because now you're opening up more capacity. You're creating more leverage so that the business can deliver this thing at far greater volume than you ever could personally. And so for a business owner, I think you take great pride in creating a product or a service, but then you should take great pride in creating the infrastructure that supports that product or service being delivered at a scale that you could never personally accomplish yourself. And it's much more powerful of a thing to scale a business and to be the owner of a business that's successfully scaled than it is to be the owner of a company where you still have to do all the work. Absolutely. I agree. Great. So we covered all those areas. Now, in terms of let's summarize the benefits of why companies like what what is the problem? Let's take a look at the problem we're trying to solve by documentation and what is the result on the other end of it, right? So we'll start with the problem. Documenting the processes and procedures using a software like Trenial is a solution. What does it look on that end of it? So the, the problem often is inconsistency. Uh, you know, when processes are not documented and you you uh, leave it up to people ambiguously to, to do whatever they would like and things can be done all different sorts of ways. And so what I would say is for, for anyone listening, if, think of your favorite franchise, a uh, Starbucks coffee shop or uh, a sandwich shop or something like that. Um, the reason those businesses are successful is because you can go from one country to the next and have the same experience in two different buildings that are 10,000 miles or kilometers apart. And that's because of process. And so in most small businesses, they uh, only grow to a scale that someone can wrap their arms around and, and watch everything. You know, they only grow to one location or they only grow to a small team um, because once you can't watch everything anymore, you either have process that guides people to do things correctly or you have chaos and people do things inconsistently. And so the problem with not having documentation is inconsistent customer experience. It's inconsistent products, inconsistent services. And that really hurts your brand and it hurts your reputation. And so fast forward to using a tool like Trainual, documenting a process, giving your people clear expectations on how to do something and how to do it well. Now you get the end result, which is consistency. And when you have consistency, you can have scale because if things are done predictably the same way every time, then it doesn't matter which store the customer buys at or what time of day or what day of the week or what person they worked with, they get the same experience and that builds the reputation of your brand and the trust of your customer and the referrals to get you even more business. And so it's really all about consistency that unlocks scale. Absolutely. And then it allows, of course, to train better and to retain employees and to um, scale faster. Completely agree with you. Yeah, so all those are, uh, are extra benefits. So if a business is, is operating consistently, they're getting more customers, 
they're not getting a lot of one-time customers that came and had a bad experience. They're getting repeat customers. And so they build this foundation, which creates more revenue and more revenue creates more budget to be able to give people raises and hire bigger teams and, and to create benefits. And so it, it all starts with just having a product or service that works. And as that builds, as the reputation builds, so does the employee experience behind the company. For sure. So now, Chris, you, as I mentioned at the beginning, um, Trennial has been voted as the number one best place to work at in Arizona. So what is your secret for great culture? Because, of course, in order to get number one, you know, you have a great culture. That's basically an indication. So what, from your uh, position as the CEO, as the founder, what do you find that are the key to the key components of a great culture? Well, I think the first thing is we're really intentional about people's early experience joining the company. So of course we use our own product. And so we create an amazing onboarding experience as we hire people and bring them on. And we create crystal clear expectations for what they're going to do in their role, how they can be successful, what they should achieve in their first 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, what their growth path is here at the company. And so they start on such a strong foundation of really understanding what their next few years of their career will be like. And so that, that's a, a really crucial piece to the beginning of, uh, of, of their journey. And then the next piece is uh, we listen. We, we uh, are always doing these engagement surveys. We survey people's spouses and, and partners. We, uh, we, we, um, we do uh, pulse surveys, engagement surveys, 180s, 360s, all, all this feedback to understand what people are experiencing at the business. What are their ideas? What things could we fix? And by acting on people's feedback, we create a culture where people want to give more feedback because they see that that feedback is taken into account and taken action on. And so I think the, the keeping people engaged is about listening and acting on the feedback. And then we hold ourselves accountable to, to results. So everybody has projects that they're working on. We report on those across the company and we make tremendous progress as a business. And so I think if you put someone in a company where they feel like they have a really clear roadmap they feel like they are empowered to speak up and make great suggestions. And then they and their peers are held accountable for great results. It's, it, that's what makes an amazing company. So I, I had the benefit of uh, consulting for 150 other businesses and seeing the problems of not listening to your people, not taking their suggestions, not putting intentionality into, into their experience. And so I feel fortunate to be able to, to correct those things with Trenual. Amazing. So what's the future like for uh, Trenual? Wow. Uh, well, I think we're just scratching the surface in terms of the product that we're building. You know, the, the, when we set out to, uh, to launch this company, the idea was most small businesses don't document anything. And most small businesses stay small forever. And the reason is because they don't have consistent processes. And so we thought there is this whole category of software that's different from existing tools. It's not project management. It's not financial payroll kind of tools. It's not communication tools in a chat and email sort of way, but it's like the knowledge of the company. Where do we house the knowledge of the company? And it feels like an untapped market, even, even still today. And so, you know, we're, we're dedicated for years and years and years to come in, uh, in, in building the best tool for small growing companies to document what they do. Excellent. And, you know, I work with Trenual and my clients use Trenual. And what I notice is that you're always innovating. You know, there are always um, new tools or new things that come out. Like, for instance, right now, you can also build your org chart in Trenual, which is fantastic. You just need to enter the name. Basically, you enter the name of your employees and who do they report to, and then you cre it creates the org chart for you. And different, as different things like that that are very helpful, very engaged community of consultants. You know, you can see the your culture is also... Um, it's kind of like contagious. It comes, it goes out to the Slack community that we have of consultants and et cetera. So it's definitely, I can see how it is actually, it actually happens and how you're going to continue to grow and grow and grow. So that's, that's really exciting. 
So maybe well, we should do so another much. podcast. Yeah, you're welcome. We should do another podcast when you get to like 200 employees and then 500 employees, you know, and okay. because there will be challenges in each, each step. There are challenges as we know, you know, because both you and I consulted companies in that size and every, every step of the way you see the challenges, but you can totally solve it by organizing better, by putting more systems, et cetera. So that's exciting. Well, thank you. And you can't predict everything. So, you know, in the same way that I don't know what problems will hit at 200 or 500 employees, we're still dealing with brand new challenges today at 81 people that, you know, we've never dealt with before. And, and so the, the, the thing for everyone to take home with them is, you know, you're, you're not documenting processes because you have a crystal ball of everything you'll ever need. You're documenting processes for what you need in the moment to grow the business, to delegate, to keep things operating consistently. And it's a constant. It's not a, a one and done uh, project. It's something we should always be working on. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's another thing that, you know, we didn't quite touch on, but in terms of keeping them current, right? So they have to be revised. They have to grow with the company. They can be stagnant. And that's one of the beauties of using a tool like Trenial is that you can change it very easily. All you need to do is just go in there, press the edit and, and start typing, you know, so it's, you don't have to reprint the entire menu. And once you make a, a suggestion or a change, then you can just, um, everyone that has a login can see it and they can sign off on it and they can read it and they can use it. So that's, that's how you keep current also your processes and procedures and policies. Absolutely. Well, thank you for being such a great advocate for us as well. And I, uh, I appreciate uh, everything that you're doing. You are very welcome. So let's tell our listeners if they want to find out more about Trenial, they should go to trenial.com. Exactly. And if you'd like more on the business playbook, you can go to the businessplaybook.com or you can also find it in the header on Trenial's website. Uh, and if you'd like to connect with me, you can find me mostly on LinkedIn and Instagram is where I hang out at Chris Ronzio. Absolutely. And Chris, you respond right away on LinkedIn, which is awesome. I didn't try you on Instagram, but you know, you don't have, you, there are no filters. You want to communicate to Chris, you just go to LinkedIn, write him a message. He writes you right back. So that's also, I think, a quality of a great leader in terms of having those open communications. So Awesome. And I'm also going to include a link to uh, Trenial in the podcast notes so everybody can go and access it. Perfect. So, Chris, it was great having you as a guest. Thank you so much. And thank you for sharing all this knowledge. It's been fantastic. Absolutely. And thank you so much for having me. And I can't wait to see you on my podcast coming up soon. Sounds good. Thanks for listening to the System Simplified Podcast. We'll see you again next time and be sure to click subscribe to get future episodes.